Hi guys, it's Dimitri and Mike here from Start Stop. We have today the 2019 Toyota Aris. It's chrome. Let's do this again. Okay? We've got the 2019 Toyota Aris here today. It's a Corolla. It's been changed. The name's changed. It's now I'm Corolla. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I keep doing the same thing. I keep telling you this. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Dimitri and Mo from Start Stop Reviews. Today we've got the 2019 Toyota Aris. It's again. It's a Corolla. <laughs> Uh, before we uh, set out on a driving review yes. of this car, just want a little bit of a chat about the uh, kind of, I'd say, dark horse of this car, which is mm. really the uh, the traditional Toyota yeah, infotainment system. Yeah. It's never uh, been great and it never will be for a long time. We'll show you a little bit of that now. We're going to have a chat about it because I really want to show you how this system differs from the old one. Yeah, okay, cool. So if you have a look at this infotainment system here, the graphics have been updated from the previous uh, very bland blue kind of washed out blue look of the previous uh, Toyota infotainment systems. Noticeably on this system is a lack of Android Auto or a uh, Apple CarPlay. While this may be a deal breaker for some, you have got functionality such as Bluetooth, uh, DAB radio on there. Um, you have the ability to pair your phone um, there via Bluetooth. You've also got Miracast as well, so you are able to actually uh, mirror your phone onto this screen here through uh, through the system settings but here, here, this is another thing with this infotainment system you can see here I'm you know I am just trying to find this option on the menu and it's it's you know it's not as easy as it looks it is it is sometimes a bit convoluted um, in its uh, usage it's better than it was before it's more responsive than the previous infotainment system but it is nevertheless not perfect. It's always been a downfall of Toyota vehicles. Uh, you have got a large screen. You can see you've got this sat-nav here. You've got this large bar here and here. This um, this kind of side column here with your options does extend a little bit at the bottom there, which does really take up some screen space, makes the map a lot smaller than it should be for a unit of this size. Um, you do have quite a small screen real estate here. Um, to set a destination on it, if you have a look here, it does ask you, you know, where would you like to go, okay, so I would want to go, I don't know, I would say I'll go back to the dealership who's uh, kindly lent us this vehicle, um, if we go here, uh, see, BR15, uh, and then, you know, you just get stuck here, you're like, right, what do I do, you have to put a space after your first part of your postcode, and then, you know, to every time you have to change from like a number to a letter, you have to press change type. It's not as simple as just, you know, switching this keyboard with a quick settings. Um, it, you know, it, ca it can be a bit of a problem, um, certainly working out how to use a sat nav. Um, the system itself is not bad. It has got real time traffic, which it pulls from radio stations. Um, you've also got the option to pair up your phone wirelessly and get a... Uh, internet based traffic updates okay so we're going to talk about the so most talking spoken about the 18 engine infotainment system i'm just going to touch on the interior of the car so for a toyota this is even the exterior of the car is quite nice um and it's it's not it doesn't look like a toyota from the past of, of past design so this is a really refreshing design from the back and the front all the way around i have no complaints with the design at all even in the interior, which is quite surprising, it's very, very plush in here. Um, yes, down here there is a bit of scratchy plastics. However, you're not really going to touch those areas really often, apart from you when you grab a bottle of water or something from there. And there is decent space for a water bottle, but not a very big one, so about a small water bottle there. Um, just coming down here on the dials. So I think uh, my biggest kind of happy part about this, if this system is it does sync. Um, and you do have dual zone climate control, so I can set it to whatever I want. 
but it's so nice when you're just alone and you can set it because coming from the BMW and the Mini you don't have that option on the 1 Series and the um, Mini at all. Just coming down here and um, we've got some space for your phone as well and you can see there's a little USB port and an aux port just underneath there. Um, you can chuck your phone down there. I, however, if you do have a bigger phone, I do think you might struggle a bit. For example, if you have a, an iPhone XS Max or, you know, a Galaxy Note 9 or a Samsung S10 Plus, you're going to struggle a bit with that space down there. However, it's nice it's there, but I just think it's not the greatest placement. Um, I wish that was more kind of forward or, you know, slightly bit bigger. You do have heated seats, so I've got mine on and they're quite nice and comfy. They're, you know, not too hot as some other cars have it um you've got two modes a low and a high um just down here you've also got your driver's control so if you press the hand uh, brake for me so just down here we do have your drive select modes um which i've also shown in the b footage you've got an ev mode so you can drive electric only on a few miles um this is a self-charging hybrid um as well and you, you, this is a cvt transmission which is also got a sport gauge here and you've got paddle shifters on the wheels as well and the steering wheel is quite nice it's all leather so and it's across the range as well um and then coming down here you've got two cup holders you've got the and um, what's quite cool as well is you've got this kind of park feet the um electronic handbrake will come on as soon as you put it into park which is quite nice and it's got the auto hold as well glove box is quite nice and spacious you've got another usb port down there which is quite nice in a 12 volt socket um you can fit two cups of coffee in there um a small coffee will do there just fine without popping the lid off um coming on the top it's nice that you've got our mirrors have lights on them for a price for a car for this kind of price well it's, it's starting to creep up in price anyway starting at twenty one thousand pounds onwards from the icon to all the way to this pacific trim level which is the xl so this car's got everything and we've got a two litre engine in there which is producing 180 horsepower and then it, that combined with that electric motor also it produces about roughly we're getting about 49.3 mpg as you can just see down there so really really good for a car of its um, this thing probably the sweet spot though because i mean it's nice to have a two liter engine but the problem with this car is i feel this is more geared towards economical driving so i would go for the 1.8 and let's be honest you're not going to be trashing it in a toyota corolla by any stretch of the mile since Dimitri's called the uh, Corolla an Auris a few times, I've decided uh, on start stop reviews, we're now going to do a new test for boot size. We are doing the can it fit a large, slightly overweight adult male in the back. And here he is, as you can see, we've shoved him in the boot. He's having a comfortable nap. Can it fit Dimitri? Let's have a look. As you can see, yes, it can. As you can see it's completely silent it's yeah. just that's the that's the thing with hybrid vehicles you know you are going low when you go low speeds if, if, unless your battery's depleted you, you yeah. are completely um on electric um and you oh, know, yeah. you're not worrying about plugging in a car so so, so as claims of self-charging hybrids you know that energy does come from somewhere the petrol engine just it acts, generates as, gener it acts as generator um you've got regenerative braking as well um, which is you know quite surprisingly it generates a lot of um, it generates a lot of the energy yeah the, regenerative the braking actually does generate a lot of energy for the battery um i'm driving it at the moment i'm driving normal modes um yeah. you've got different drive modes on this car but to be honest you're going to be in normal mode you're not comfort uh eco is you know Eco is actually very good for the motorway, I find, because when you're going at constant yeah. speeds, you don't really need the acceleration. No. Um, on the 2 litre, sport mode does make a difference. You do mm. feel better throttle yeah. response. On the 1.8, not so much. What do you think of the general comfortable uh, of the driving? I mean, I find it quite... Well, first of all, I'm going to say I love these seats in here. Um, that's probably the they're one not Toyota seats, they're are not. they? They're absolutely not Toyota seats. These <laughs> they're are, so comfortable. They're not like the standard bog standard seats you get on a Yaris or anything like this. This is really not. nice. Yeah, these, these you know, are, we've got a bit of leather. And we've a got bit of Alcantara. And a bit of fabric. This it, is like a, you know, it's a hybrid car with hybrid seats. It's crazy. It's got yeah. Alcantara, got leather, got a bit of cloth. It's a bit of everything really? in these seats. And, I don't know what's going on. And on your side, you've also got lumbar support, which is actually quite nice. Yeah, you've got yeah, a little button there to yeah. control that. So it's really nice. So. In here, it's really comfortable. There's a there's a ton of leg space. I mean, I'm, I've put my seat quite in forward. Uh, Mo's got his seat all the way back because of his uh, big ass legs. 
Um, but, I'm, out, I'm disproportionate. <laughs> yeah. I I find that the uh, the actual driving absolutely smooth. Um, you know, it, it's phenomenally smooth to drive. It's quiet. It's comfortable. It handles little bumps and changes in the road very very well. Not as well as, uh, for example, a Rav4 or a larger Toyota vehicle. Which Toyota vehicles are generally comfortable anyway. Yeah. Um, but you know the way it handles is very nice my complaint I mean going on with your leg room at the front yeah. front leg room's absolutely fine, fine. where it is uh, struggles is the rear the rear leg room is a bit lacklustre it's not normal that you get in a Toyota car and you don't have space in the back this is not something yeah. normal I mean the the car that this replaces the Auris I think due to the styling the Auris's yeah. leg room at the back was far better than this is uh, yeah, would I, you not agree I would agree and I think Obviously, this is the hatchback version. I mean, if we were, I mean, us Brits do love our hatchback, so that's why we, this is probably the most popular version. I think, of. yeah, I think out of all the versions, you can get this in the state. It's and just, a saloon. Yeah, you can get a saloon and a state version of this car, so we're just in a hatchback. The interior is the same across all three uh, models in this, in this, in, you know, all three body styles have the same interior. Uh, if you heard that there, that was a forward collision warning. I've just avoided a ambulance, uh, ambulance there that was parked off the side of the road. Um, said it warned me I didn't signal to, to uh, uh, slightly cross over the white line, but there was no one around anyway. Yeah. So let's also talk about the kind of um, the safety tech and all the autonomous driving tech. So this is not high tech by any stretch of the mile, but as standard, you do get adaptive cruise control on the basic. Um, you don't even get rear parking sensors on the on the icon. No, you get so, a camera though. You do get yeah, a camera on so the it's kind of weird. Uh, a standard. Um, I mean, to, to be honest, in terms of specifications, the cars are well equipped. Uh, icon tech is going to be a favourite for most. It has mostly everything you need. It adds the parking sensors. Yeah. You've got full range uh, radar guided adaptive cruise control on, on these cars. And you've also got park assist, which is also quite nice. The cabin is a nice place to be. It, you don't, yeah. you know, you can live comfortably in this, trim, with this car. Yeah. Yeah. In this trim level. So the other, I think the biggest difference between the, this one and the icon tech is obviously going to be the kind of design of the car so for example in the front you've got like this nice bits of chrome uh, bigger wheels so you get a 18 inch hour wheels 18 inch yeah, yeah. Um, and also you get this kind of red stitching on the dashboard which is quite nice as well so it's more kind of a more a luxury step up in that way it is yeah uh, the actual car as well you get the two-tone color on the XL which yep. is lovely um, this car is the Scarlet Flare bi-tone uh, price of this car is roughly about thirty thousand and ninety yeah. pounds. So it's not a cheap um, car. It's not a cheap car. No. It, it, you know, Toyota does. You, you know, they command a respectable price for their vehicles, but you are getting quality. Toyota are known for their quality. Well, more than um, yeah, not in terms of materials, materials but nice. longevity of the of car. Course, you yeah. know. You've got a you've got a five year hundred thousand mile warranty in, in Europe. Uh, well, in specific UK. Yeah. Um, and you know, Toyotas are famously known for being very, very good runners. Yeah. You know, you 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 won't you won't find any BMW that will last certainly as long as a, a, well, a Toyota. <laughs> well, no. not the new ones, not the new ones. No. To commute around, this is great. Or if you want, you know, you know, economically not worrying about electric um, powertrain too much, this is perfect. You know, there's no fuss in it. It's just. This is Don't great. Think yeah. it's I've been driving around well, now. Yeah. I'm getting 71 mpg. I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm driving yeah. the same as my BMW. I'm not, <laughs> not, not the same same floor in it. I actually drive my BMW quite normal most of the time, unless I get on a nice, you know, little B road. Yeah. But you know, I'm driving it normal. I'm, I'm getting fantastic economy. I mean, I could see myself <laughs> using this as a daily driver um, for for work. You know, I could I could do that. Talking about the kind of hybrid powertrain, so again, we have the two litre in here. Um, as you can see, Mo's currently driving right now in town, uh, and you can see kind of this chart of how um, the self charging hybrid works, or I guess hybrid uh, powertrain works. You can see I'm basically driving on electric, the battery is just doing all the work at the moment. Um, notice when I'm slowing down or braking. The arrows going the other way to show that charge is uh, being put back into the battery via the electric motor. As you can see now, the engine's now kicked in. I've put my foot down a bit. Both the engine and battery are now helping at the point there to accelerate. So when you need bursts of speeds, both of them will kick in together um, to help you out there, give you a bit of burst of power. 
um, as you're driving along. In the zero to 60 time, if you ever care, and if you do end up getting a two litre, it's actually um, just under eight seconds. Um, and if you go for the 1.8, which is the one I'd probably recommend for this type of car, for what you'd be doing it, you know, what you'd be doing in this car, driving it A to B, I'd probably go for the 1.8 because it's just a tad bit more um, economical. Um, if you're if you're hunting, you know those type of numbers and zero sixty, and that is about eleven seconds. And there's the one point two, just normal. Just uh, just ignore the manual. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you want to buy a manual car, uh, I would. And you know, this. and you love manual, then this isn't the car for you. No. I would go for a golf. Go for a golf. A one point four, uh, TSI, uh, manual, phenomenal. You'll enjoy it a lot more. Yeah. Gear shifts will be better. Uh, don't get this in the manual. Just, just don't. Do just it. end up getting the hybrid. In, yeah. In all just get things. the hybrid. If you're gonna buy this car, buy a hybrid and choose the 1.8 liter. You would see footage that we uh, took of the boot size. You lose a lot of boot size by going for the two liter because you've got another battery. The actual car batteries. Yeah. In the boot. There. In the boot. Yeah. So you, you know, you you do lose that space there. What I'm going to do now is we're going to, as Dimitri said, we're going to show you the self parking. Dimitri's just going to record it and we're going to show you just how this car is, how the self parking works um, and how quickly we can do it. You'll see my hands will come off the wheel, I will just literally control the braking and we'll see if the car is able to park itself. Okay, as you can see I'm going to uh, attempt to do the parallel parking here with the self parking. So there's a button here for the self parking, I'll just press it. I will just drive a little bit forward here. There's two cars here, I've just passed the Lexus, which is lovely by the way, and another car. I'm going to signal reverse this car behind me, waiting at the moment. I'm just taking my hands off, I'm just controlling the braking, and I'm just letting the car slowly sort itself out. As you can see, other cars passing very safely, and we've completed the manoeuvre. It's, you know, it's brilliant it's done it it's asked me to go forward a little bit but it's just correcting itself and it's finished I've got between two cars uh, distance from the curb I've got about that much so it's you know it's measured it fine it does work as with all driving age you do need to keep an eye out and just make sure that you know you are in control of the car at all times Hey guys, thanks for watching our review of the all new Toyota Corolla. As you can see here, we're in completely different, different attire. Uniform, yep. um, unfortunately, we ran out of time with the Cor uh, Corolla. Yep. But anyway, thank you for Jemka Toyota Bromley and the manager there, Neil Missing, for lending us uh, the Corolla for thanks, uh, Neil. you know for an extended test drive, if you like to call it that. Um, and we got our chance to um, test a vehicle yeah. quite thoroughly on different roads. Yeah. Um, so Dimitri, what did you think of the new Corolla? Right, so the question is, would I buy one? Um, uh, if, if I had, personally right now, no. Um, but as much as I like the car, I mean, it's a really good car. It's got all those little, you know, if you go for the XL, was it the XL? Yeah, the, the XL. XL. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the, the one we drove. The yeah. one we drove. That had all the niceties. I think you want to stick in the middle range. Uh, with the Icon Tech. tech. Yeah, Icon, Icon tech. tech. I think, as we said before, yeah, in, early in the video, probably that the does best. have. Yeah, it has yeah. everything you need. You need to yeah, be honest. I mean, yeah, you, you don't want to go all the way with that. But yeah, that was really nice. Um, I mean, it's it's a great A to B car. I wouldn't like. It's great. It, it's good on fuel efficiency and fuel economy as well. And it's a great A to B car. So Your thoughts on a uh, two liter versus one point eight? I'd probably go with the 1.8 as much as I like the 2 litre power right. is because of how the car is it doesn't make sense to go for 2 litre yes if you want more power then fair enough but I think the 1.8 is just right I think because one you want a smaller engine yeah. Um, yeah, yeah and yes it's outputting less power but it's more fuel efficient so, yeah, yeah I think you're right I mean if you for a car like that to go for the 2 litre the actual money that you do spend you could take it I mean if you're after performance in, 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 a, in a, a hatchback a mid, middle size you would you, you know, you probably one. then you wouldn't. Number one, you wouldn't buy one, and you probably then start looking at warm hatches, hot hatches, those kind of territory. Yeah. Yes, the MPG would be worse, but most modern ones do have. You know, they are quite fuel efficient yeah, exactly, as well. Yeah. Yes, the Corolla is going to save you on fuel, and I think it's better to uh, you know keep the car in its comfort zone. It is the eco commuter. It is the a comfortable drive. It's the A to B. Yeah. It's yeah. A, and I think it's better to keep it in, in its comfort zone than rather than adding a two liter engine pain. Yeah, exactly. And starting to get into, you know, hot hatch territory. You know, you've got some great cars in that range, like the 
uh, i30n yep. for example i30n the the last week's well the, not last week last month's video the m140i and my mini as well yeah you can pick pick one up used or nearly new for similar price yeah um to what you can at a fully spec uh, corolla in uh you know, a two litre Corolla can, if you choose buy tone paint, you can push it nearly 30 grand, can't you? Yeah, that's a lot for a Toyota. I do think day. so. I mean, it's, yeah. if, I mean if, if it's a Land Cruiser, then it's a different story, <laughs> or a Hilux, but you know, um, or a Supra. Um, yeah, I mean, this, like I said, it's the A to B car, and if you want something that goes A to B, fuel efficient, has all the little nice and gadgets, and that is the car. But anyway, thanks guys for watching our review. Um, hit like and subscribe. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you like that so we can continue doing more content. Yeah. Uh, we don't release videos very often. As you can see, that's not our full-time thing. We do no. have jobs. Unfortunately. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, we have jobs. So uh, but, we will continue to review. Um, we'll have a look at yeah. what cars to do but next. Hey, we'll guys, if you, you know, if you kind of, if you like our videos and if you know a dealership or someone who's, or you know someone that's willing to give us a car to review for, for a while, for a couple of days, then hey, hit us up. Um, just or even if comment. you want your, your car on our channel, um, we're quite happy um, if you bring us along with you and you want to get your car on the channel or features and, and perhaps, you know, just show us more. It doesn't have to be a stock car, it can be modified, just talk us through your mods, yeah. show us what you like about your car. Um, at the end of the day, this is, uh, you know, we're all, we're all part of the same community, people that love cars. Um, yeah. We hope, uh, you know, we hope that you get to watch more of our videos in the future and uh, certainly this won't be the end for us. So. Thanks Dimitri, thank um, you. and thank you guys for watching See our See you later guys, bye.